For Best Music Coach, my name is Dan, and you are watching a Guitar Teacher's Reaction live and in real time to the Omori Original Soundtrack Part 2. Now, I have never heard this music before in my life, not once, not twice, never, ever, ever before, so I'm going to be reacting in real time as I check out these songs with you guys. Hello, chat. How's it going? You can support this channel by clicking like and subscribe on this video. Also hit that little ding notification bell and please join, become a member, support the channel. You all, you can also check out our number one best-selling books in the description below as well as our incredible music lessons. And lastly, please comment. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this reaction, what you thought about the soundtrack, and of course, as always, what you would like to see me react to next. So with no further ado, let's get this thing rocking and rolling with an archaic resonance from the Amori original game soundtrack part two. Here we go. Oh, listen to that little sound in there. This one is called X marks the spot, exclamation point. Interesting. So I think something really interesting about this song is that you can hear the emphasis of the beats is more on two and four, when typically in four four we think of the strong beats as being one and three, strongest, uh, weak, strong, weakest. In this sort of a reggae feel, more emphasis is put on beat two and four. This next song is called Those Who Forget History. So that sounds like a use of the orchestra hit, as heard in Big Shot as well from Delta Room Chapter 2. Right there, yeah. This next one is called Tumbleweeds.
that wow in the bass. I think something that was very interesting on that song was that even though it sounds like it's in 3-4, the way the phrasing was sitting over the accompaniment was really weird, almost threw me for a loop, made me think it was in 6-8 at first, but coming back to that strong application every third beat, uh, I, I gotta say, it feels like 3-4. An interesting one, this next one is called... Firefly Forest, say that five times fast, Cat's Cradle. Bass is starting to come in. Well, a couple measures ago. Was that really? That uh, so a hollow sounding thing? Yeah, interesting sound. bit of feedback starting to play in now in the left ear. I call it feedback, it's really just a very high pitch. And now it's coming out, sounding less like feedback, more like a synth.
Very inter interesting use of delay. Whereas continually the right ear was leading and the left ear was mirroring it back. This next one is called... Forest Frenzy. Ooh, interesting. Let's see if the piano will do that again. So there's that synth that's very high that's doubling the piano notes. Next one is called Sweet Paralysis. Roll that high end then. So I think what was interesting in there is we actually heard some callbacks to chord progressions from previous songs in part two. We had this, it sounds to me like a one to minor four type of a thing. So there's some connection most likely between this song and either a character, uh, some sort of noun, a person, place, or thing that we saw previously. Uh, because that chord progression was exactly the same as one that we had for the entire song a couple songs ago.
Okay, so what was really fun about this song, it was structured like a jazz tune, so you have what we would call the head in. So essentially the melody or the main idea presented for the jazz tune, and then people soloing over the changes or over the chord progression. So we had a sax solo, then we had a piano solo, then we had what sounded like a marimba solo, and then we had head out, which is where you play the melody again on the way out. Now I think what was interesting here is that after the sax solo, the sax came in the same sax sound was then playing chords or comping behind the piano which normally you can't do because on saxophone you can only play one note at a time unless you're growling but that, that that's beside the point so you had the saxophone then comping for the piano solo and then the piano solo comped for the uh marimba solo a very interesting presentation of an idea of a jazz tune this is called how ellipses sad exclamation point I think what's interesting for this tune is you have that one violin note all the way up high the entire way through. This, this next one is called How Tragic. So now it sounds like there's a pad synth holding that high note the violin was previously. This next one is called Eternal Dungeon. These sounds are deliciously strange. It's like the first time if you've ever had astronaut ice cream. Weird yet delicious. I love that little slap back reverb or delay on those timpani hits there. Splintered Sweets in the Castle.
Sounds like banjo. That's definitely a banjo patch. That's hilarious. Reminds me of Avicii. Yeah, four on the floor, baby. Uh. Oh, that was sick. Oh, yes. Oh, man. I could have used that looped a couple times. That was great. Wandering Rose. This def one's definitely 3-4. No question here. Interesting minor major seven sounds like. Yes. Love those pit strings in there. Ooh, love that. Okay, so how do I know this song was definitely in 3-4? It's because we hear strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa, low, high, high, low, high, high. Anytime you have that over a long period of time, you know for sure the song is in 3-4. This next one is called Stationary Rose. Sounds a little lower than... Okay, well, yes, there is a violin playing. I'm paying attention to that lower pizzicato thing. Sounds to be like a cello, maybe? Oh, doubled. Yeah, there's, there's a couple strings in there. Even more on that hit right there before. Interesting way of approaching the whole dominant area. Just like in the last one. Interesting melodic choices. So when I say pits strings or pizzicato strings, what I'm talking about is you can hear sometimes those plunk, 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 plunk. Those sounds are either on a uh, upright bass, a cello, viola, violin. Instead of playing the string with a bow, the player actually plucks the string for a pizzicato sound, which creates that different vibe, different energy. I'll point it out as we go along. 
This next one is called Valor Against All Odds. So I saw someone in the chat mentioned that Valor Against All Odds kind of sounds like a Toby Fox song, and I agree with you for a couple reasons. Number one, the use of those lower synths, and number two, that use of the, um, I'm going to call the 6-8 time signature here. Uh, I think Spear of Justice, everything when you're fighting Undyne in Undertale is essentially in this same time signature, which is 6-8. Now, how do we know it's 6-8, not 3-4? Because if you think about it, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. So how do we tell the difference? Between three, four, and six, eight. Well, here we can hear it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Dunk, 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 dunk. As opposed to um cha cha um cha cha um cha cha um cha cha, it's the the feeling of the chords and the feeling of the music is going in a cycle of six counts as opposed to three. And again, calling the six a beat is not technically correct because in six eight there's technically two beats, but we're not going to get into that for now. Carrying on. This is called "I Definitely Promised You a Rose Garden." Back to three, four here. We have those linked to the past since in the right. I love it when you had those two instruments meeting right there. For just a couple notes. Right there. I've got to find out what the name of that string patch is, because they use it in all those old Nintendo games, too. This next one is called World's End Valentine. Harpsichord shred it.
So that one is super fast, kind of like Megalovania from Undertale. Crazy, crazy, crazy fast. Now, okay, that one is either at 315 beats per minute or like 175. I'd have to sit down and listen to it again to hear exactly where the drums are. It sure felt like it was around 350. That was crazy, crazy fast. If you guys want to understand how I determine what the actual BPM is based on the uh, drum pattern, you can check out my video on best music coach here on YouTube where I do a breakdown of um, Megalovania. All right, here's the next one. That was all, that was a ton of fun too. This one is called, I just love the fifties. <laughs> that time signature was 12-8 that was a ton of fun that's following the 50s chord progression with a little variations in there this is called Lost Library Yes, this is the pyre fly. Great call, chat. Is that, it's, it's a similar chord progression, if not the same chord progression. This next one is called Bookcase. Uh-oh. That's not a bookcase I want to mess with. Thrifted tchotchkes. Listen to that cute snare on two and four. That's not there anymore. Back. Pop. Pop. <laughs> This 
This next one is called Swirly 1000 X. So while this song is basically in 4-4, four, four, it sure doesn't feel like it because this song is not conforming to your typical metric hierarchy of uh, strongest, weak, strong, weakest. There's all sorts of hits that are happening on fours and ands and all over the place to really give you this feeling of instability and inconsistency. Now, what I've started to notice, and chat, correct me if I'm wrong, I hypothesize that there's a bad guy in this scenario because a lot of times in music, when we're trying to communicate that there's a bad guy, uh, you put hits on different beats where you normally wouldn't expect them to create a feeling of instability or fear. All right, let's keep it going. This next one is called Dear Little Brother. like an Enya moment. Very interesting to hear that you had this one melody happening and then underneath it there was this rumpa thing happening with this other sort of rhythmic pad thing throughout the entire piece and that's what kept the momentum moving. You had this very sort of simple melody. I mean simple not in a bad way but simple melody. And then underneath it, waiting. waiting. And that kept the song moving and grooving. This next one is called Thalassophobia. Maybe, chat, you could tell me what Thalassophobia means because I don't know. Uh, 
Oh, fear of ocean deep water. Interesting. Or fear of drowning. Huh. Thank you, chat. Do appreciate that. So this does actually sound like you're underwater. Have you ever heard what sound sounds like underwater? All you hear are the lower, um, the lower sounds. And then that other synth is almost replicating how you can hear the sound of your own heart and breath when you're underwater, which is kind of creepy. This is called water. Hanging with the boys. Okay. Like lo fi ish vibes. So I think what was really interesting about this track is it was really lo-fi in the sense that there were obvious quote-unquote mistakes that were being made in the drums, in the lead instruments, where things weren't quite lining up together all the time. But when you have that, it does create that lo-fi vibe. Here is White Space.
playing with the tempo here, speeding up, slowing down. There's breath to this. Yeah, I agree with you, chat. It sounds like a child playing the piano, like maybe a f four year old, five year old, or even a six or seven year old before they really have learned to play with a metronome. That's kind of what it sounds like. Origin. I think what was very interesting on Origin was the controlled use of feedback. We've heard it a couple other times through this soundtrack where those really, really high, almost like dog whistly pitches um, are used in this way that brings texture to what's going on. This is called Long Way Down. Yes, Aramax in the chat, and overtones as well, correct. resort. That lead synth playing the melody that's given me so many Zelda vibes. Link to the past to be specific. Listen to those little pop, 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 pop. Yep, right there.
This next one is called Not So Empty House. So here we, we hear those pizzicato strings in there now. Again, three. Right there, pizzicato. Love that little tambourine in there. We call us a ghost solo. <laughs> Room for four. Man, that main synth is giving me French vibes. Interesting. Interesting choice of note in the bass, the harmony, and the melody there. Yeah, right there. Very, very interesting. Next one is called Gator Gamble. Interesting little detune there. Aramax could be chorus to get that detuned effect there. That, that's a solid idea. Okay, so chat, I saw a lot of you calling this one jazz. Now, while I agree with you that it uses jazz harmony, I, yeah, I mean, maybe if a jazz artist played, played this, it would be jazz, but for me, this is closer to 
your sort of Studio 54, 70s, 80s dance music, but mixed with those orchestra hits. Um, I get a little, some house vibes from it. Uh, very interesting piece of music. Not quite sure how to categorize that one. Oh, and by the way, the entire system of labeling genres is just a mechanism for the record industry to sell product. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if it's music and you like it, you like it. All right, clams, clams, clams. Here we go. one feels kind of Christmassy to me because of the um, the chimes. Love those orchestra hits mixed in in the back. Jawbreaker. Yeah, so that one's very sort of big bandy, big bandish. Golden Vengeance, Golden Vengeance. Oh yeah, side chain in that compressor. I don't know, maybe it's because it's the time of year. We're recording this in November. But those higher synths there just make me think of Christmas. Or the holidays, I should say. Call us a holiday rave. Wonderful major chord under that right there.
Where have you been all my life, Octaver Guitar? This next one is called Underwater Highway. Ooh, interesting. Interesting again. Interesting again. Very interesting. I'm not going to take time to break that one down. Let's move on to Squall. What's in that base? Reminds me of Jazz Fusion. Aquifier. I was sure that was building to something. And these synths sound like they're underwater. It sounds like bubbles. That thunder. like a dominant seven chord right underneath that whistle sound.
That sounds like a straight ahead major chord underneath that whistle. odd. Again, not in a bad way. I'm just finding it odd. I'm not going to give a comment, let's just move forward. Numbers. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do speak a little bit of German. Ein kleines bisschen. One, two, three, four, uh, five. I heard up to nine that I couldn't understand what he was saying. Oh, that's changing up the numbers. Uh, nine, ten. Yeah, okay, nine, ten. Arlington 69, you say Rusalka, which was the name of the original Little Mermaid opera. Who did that? Was that Dvorak? Yeah, it was Dvorak. sinking.
So then you left here the ping, 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 ping. This one again feels like it's underwater. The way you have these swells of sound coming in is reminiscent of Donkey Kong Country on Super NES Nintendo. Again, a use of distortion and feedback here was almost controlled feedback. That was interesting. Uh, a quick thank you to Simone Ferraro for the super chat. Uh, Simone says, firstly, thanks. Just a cool idea I had. I thought it would be cool if you could sometimes try to guess the situations and places the OSTs are used in. Well, Simone, I'll give it my best shot for a couple. How does that sound? And thank you so much for your support. And thank you so much for the super chat. Let's keep it going to the next one with H2O HCL. Uh, water hydrochloric what what does HCL mean uh, is it hi it's hydro hydro something I know it's for a uh, some kind of chemical compound hydrochloric acid yeah it is hydrochloric acid okay thank you chat Interesting use of sounds like a harp. Yeah, definitely harp. Backward sounds now. Quick thank you to 
Queer Hactic. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I'm doing my best with the I next to the X in the chat. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, they say, love the work and content you've been doing. Keep up the amazing work. Well, thank you so much, and I really, really appreciate your support. It means the world to me, and thank you so much. Let's keep it rocking and rolling. This next one is called Chemistry On and On. The mix on this is just excellent. And you can hear everything. I love that piano all the way on the right. I love that little synth here, and that little whoop, 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 whoop thing right in the middle. I really want to put a house beat under this song. That would be a lot of fun. This next one is called, But I Want to See It All With You. Interesting side compression here. Yes, I do like house music. Answering the chat question. This next one is called Grimy. <laughs> Shall be shocked, that's funny. Do to make the thing go right. <laughs> Thanks to the big bad aside. Very house here, the beat. A little more techno here. This one is called Underwater Prom Queens. Ooh, interesting. Tambourine players going nuts. 
That was sick. You know, it sounds like the entire recording was sped up to be twice as fast. So it sound in it. I could be completely wrong, but it sounds like uh, whoever made that song made it sped it up to twice speed. And that's how we're hearing it now, because there were some things with the drums where they were kind of getting a little crunchy and a little weird. That sort of sounded like when you use algorithms to speed up music twice as fast. Let's keep it going. This one is called Well, Well, Well. Is it bad that all I can see is a whale on some turntables? Oh yeah, listen, those strings come in now. Well, strings. This next one is called Swallow Hollow. Oh, so almost a continuation of Well, Well, Well. Similar ideas, similar things going on. Reminds me of like some of the tracks off the Beatles White Album. <laughs> Next one's called Gross. It's crazy. This sounds like you're in a really big room where there's a lot of echoing going on. All right, here's my best guess. Right there, you're in some sort of room, you're walking through somewhere, there's a lot of stuff going on, maybe a cave, there's water on the walls, and there's things dropping around, or that's just a menu sequence and I'm totally off. Here's the next one. <laughs> that one song, but it's some mermaids. But to go, blah, how it they <laughs> use a pitch bender to bring it back in tune. That was hilarious. Okay, this has been Amari OST 
part two. Thank you so much for watching. Please support this channel. You can become a member down there. I read and respond to all all comments but as oh excuse me all member comments and you can also check out our best-selling books and music lessons in the comments below we'll be back here on friday so make sure you subscribe and set that little notification bell for part three i'll see you all then have a fantastic awesome awesome rest of your day and i'll see you soon